Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to continue that series on recording modes in Reaper and answer a question that came up a couple times. How do you loop with pre-roll? Let's check it out. So normally when you're loop recording in Reaper and you have the pre-roll selected, that's only going to apply to your first take. So the playhead will play through the track up until the record point where it will start recording. When it gets to the end, it goes back to your time selection or your loop selection, really, and will just repeat. So the pre-roll only affects your lead into the first recording. There are some situations where you want to hear the track a little bit before, maybe a little bit after your, uh, your actual punch in point or your, the section you want to loop. So I actually came up with two possible options for doing this. We can do this with time selection auto punch while loop points are unlinked from the time selection. I don't think I've ever shown that in a video before. And the other way is to use an item selection auto punch mode plus having a time selection that includes your pre-roll and post-roll if you want. So let's check that out. So in this project, I have a bass uh, recorded and I will just add into this section. And in order to keep this video pretty quick, I'm I'm going to skip over, you know, what it's like looping with with normal loop record with pre-roll because, as I've explained, it only applies to the first loop. So we'll just go straight to the solutions to this issue. So if I want to record into this section here and I want it to include, I want to hear this section every time it loops, then the options menu and go to loop points linked to time selection, we'll just uncheck that. The recording mode I'm in is time selection auto punch, and under options menu, new recording that overlaps existing media items is set to the default mode of splits items and creates new takes. I'm gonna set the monitoring mode for these tracks to tape auto style. We're not hearing the bass during the pre-roll. So when I have loop points unlinked from the time selection, I can have them completely independent. One can be longer than the other, which can be really helpful. So the section that I want to loop is actually larger than the area that I want to record into. So I'm going to drag in the ruler for six bars, and I'm also going to make a time selection of four bars over the area that I want to record into. So I've got, so once again, time selection auto punch is on and loop playback is on. I'm just gonna move my cursor to the beginning and let's look at the metronome settings. I have count in turned off and I have pre-roll turned off. There's no additional pre-roll. I'm doing kind of a manual pre-roll with my loop section. I think I'm ready to record. Let's try this out. So you get the idea. It's looping a larger selection than I'm actually recording into. So got to remember to group these items and let's copy them out here and see how long they actually recorded for. So I'm showing take two and there it is. During the pre-roll section, I wasn't playing anything and so it's mostly quiet there. And the same at the end where I wasn't playing on the third take. So that's a totally usable way of working. You just need to remember that your time selection and your looping sections are unlinked. So let's put it back to normal. Let's link our loop points to the time selection again. I'm gonna go into a different recording mode. So this is option two for punching into a section like this. I'm going to use auto punch selected items. So you could just select an item and then record into that and it will um, only record into that. We also need to have cycle and our time selection in this case would be longer than 
our um, recording area. So you can use a time selection or again, unlink and just record into this section. So that would work fine if I have this section and I just wanna add another take to it. But in this case, if I wanna record into this area here, there's no items there. So I'm gonna to go to the insert menu and go to empty item. And that puts in an empty item there. I'm just gonna copy another one down. So I've got two empty items. An empty item, when you record into it, will just add in takes to that item. Just making sure that the time selection or loop selection is a little longer than you need. Uh, loop playback mode turned on and auto punch selected items is on. In the background, it will record for this entire section, but only in this section will it draw in the waveforms or fill in the arrangement with the new recording. All right, so just making sure the items are selected, let's go. And this is probably not the best use case of this type of looping. I think for, you know, maybe lyrics or something would be easier to, to do this with, or like something that has like a lead in, especially something that's maybe not to the grid, just something that leads into another section, or you need to hear what's before and after to hear things in context, maybe for a dialogue recording or ADR or something like that. Uh, that may be a little more appropriate than this really straight up, this is really straightforward um, rock song recording. So there you go. There is two different ways you can use uh, various features in Reaper to loop record with a pre-roll, even a post-roll if you wanted. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.